Okay. To be able to draw your puzzle cubes in Inventor, you have to go find Inventor Pro Session 2013. Double click on it, and yes, you will want to wait a little while as the file starts loading. Hopefully, not too long. There we go. You'll be presented with a different file option screen. You will want to be creating a new file. You want to pick standard ITT. ITT for inventor part file. Yes, we can pick sheet metal, but that's only if we want our puzzle cube blocks to be stamped out of one continuous piece of metal been folded in to make each cube. Not what we're doing today. We want solid objects. So a standard IPT file. Double click. And in a few moments. Thinking. Thinking. This laptop is fairly moderate, so it's not too bad. There we go thinking and then we're on our desktop. As you recall from the first time we played with Inventor, you are looking at a toolbar across the top. These are all modeling tools and we can use this to alter our shapes to create odd solids. Right now we need to create a two-dimensional sketch. If you go over to the corner where it says create sketch, Inventor will try to help you by when you roll over an icon, expand, in this case, we click Create a 2D Sketch. We get all three coordinate planes. And based on the isometric orientation of this little home cube, that's our front. I want to pick this plane, which is technically the XY plane. Oh, look, it says XY. So we'll roll over it, click on it, and now we should have a set of crosshairs that signify that we're now oriented looking down on this plane. Our modeling toolbar across the top became our sketch toolbar. Now we have the ability to actually draw a sketch, which is what every one of our parts will start off with. We're going to take, for simplicity's sake, a two-point re uh, rectangle, two-point rectangle. Click on that tool. Anywhere on the center of the grid approximately, go ahead and line up, click, and drag across. If you notice in Inventor, it tries to give you the approximate dimensions. And yes, you could stretch this out. Let's say this puzzle cube piece was uh, three quarters inch by three quarter inch. You could sit there and try to do this by hand, and it almost works until you realize that you need to really move all at the same time. You know what? Let's find an easier way to do this. We'll just click here. And then we'll say right click, OK, we're done. To orient, you see our puzzle or two dimensional sketch, a little square rectangle. Obviously, it is not perfectly three quarter by three quarter. And yes, well, we could use the automatic guide tool, dimensioning tool, as we're stretching out. It's a lot easier to actually just click on the dimension tool, roll over to the, at the side you want to dimension, it will highlight itself in a new color, click on it and then pull up. Click on it again, and it'll give you the chance to edit this dimension. All dimensions in this case are in inches, and in this case, 0 0.6922709. We don't need something that precise. We're just going to tell it 0 0.75. We hit Enter, and automatically our part is dimensioned to 0.75 inches. We roll over to this side and do the same thing. And we go 0.75, enter. And then we now have a perfectly dimensioned cube. This would be approximately the size of one puzzle block. Let me finish the sketch. We kick out of sketch mode and our drawing tools become our modeling tools. Now we're going to tell this, you know what, I need to extrude. I want to grow this 2D sketch into a three-dimensional solid. I click extrude. And automatically it locks on to the one closed loop profile that was available and asks is it and shows potentially what I can do with it. Is it you want to extrude this? Yes, I do. 
but not one inch. I'm going to pretend this piece is approximately the length of mm, three puzzle blocks, which is 2.25 inches. Automatically, you can see that the auto extrude tool is trying to compensate and show that it's going to look like that. I'm going to say OK. And I click on my home key and I can realign myself. Now this bar is approximately it would be the equivalent of three puzzle cube blocks in depth based on this orientation. Now I'm saying, you know what? I would like to add a new sketch here. Um, my puzzle piece are more is more interesting, more complex than just a, a three puzzle cube block. So I'm gonna go add a new sketch. I can just do it by actually right clicking on the surface I want to start adding features onto select new sketch and now I have a new sketch is aligned and oriented to the top of the previous puzzle piece I'm going to take my line tool and tell it I need to draw a line right here inventor will try to help you by locking on to the nearest line that seems intuitive I draw that line be careful I do not want my line to be crooked this piece is supposed to be perpendicular if you notice there's a perpendicular icon in the lower corner, zero degrees deviation. Go all the way straight across, click, and do it again. I will draw straight across, click, and then click OK. Now I have two lines of perpendicular going across. Obviously, these are not dimensioned properly. I have to tell Inventor how far from this edge. To this edge. I go to my dimensioning tools and tell it from this line to this line and then pull away. It's not going to be 0.831, it's going to be 0.75. And it spaces that line automatically. My dimension tool is still active. I tell it now from this line to this line and pull away. 0.75. Now I have a zone, a profile, an area here that's spaced out to be the distance of one puzzle cube block. I'm going to finish my sketch now. Go to extrude. And notice this time it didn't automatically pick a profile. As far as inventor is concerned, there are three active possible profiles to extrude this one, this one, or this one. I'm going to go for this one. And uh, medically, something looks like it's going wrong. You recall the last time we did a 0.25 extrusion, inventors got that information in its memory. So we need to go back here and change things. I want not 0.25, but 0.75. And then click OK. So now I have a piece that's starting to resemble a little more of one of the pieces you may have. Well, we're not done yet. Let's go here. We're going to add a piece that extrudes out from this side. If I cl right click on that surface, ask for a new sketch, I can now take a line tool and close that profile. Close that section. Make a new closed area. I finish my sketch. Go to extrude. Click on what I extrude. It is currently set to 0.75 inches. You know what? I'll keep that 0.75 inches. Click OK. And now I have a piece that's starting to look a little more interesting. I'll add one more feature on this particular piece. I'll turn it to its back. I'm going to add a new sketch here. And take my line tool. Draw straight down. Be careful, don't go crooked on this. You want to use inventor's guiding features to tell you, oh look, perpendicular, not perpendicular, off by some degrees. Perpendicular, 90 degrees. Click. I can finish my sketch. In the meantime, let me go back. I double click on sketch four. I've not dimensioned this line explicitly. If you were watching while I drew the line, it told me I was 0.75 inches away from a reference point. I can check to make sure indeed it is 0.75 by saying 
the dimension between here and here, and then I pull away, is 0.75 inches. In fact, if I click here, Inventor might generate an error. And there it is. Adding this dimension will over constraint the sketch. Choose Accept to create a driven dimension. We're going to hit Cancel. Inventor is actually bright enough to know that when you're adding too many dimensions, too many, too much information, just like on a multi view drawing, it is possible to over dimension the drawing. In Inventor, those over dimensions become constraints that restrict our drawings, that restrict our parts. So obviously, that 0.75 was not necessary. It was already fixed, it was already internal. So I'm going to hit Cancel. And that means I don't have to worry about dimensioning this. It's already fixed. And as you can see when we tried, it was already set to 0.75. We hit finish sketch. And now we'll extrude. Which profile? This one. How far? 0.75 inches. Click OK. And now there is my puzzle cube piece. Now this is going to be a nice square. Uh, angular object. We don't want to do any fillets on this. That's later for more advanced modeling techniques. But right now all you have to worry about is the fact that if you can start with a simple sketch, if you can start with a simple sketch, go back to extrusion 1, go back to extrusion 1 with an extrusion 1 sketch 1. If you can start with a simple sketch, then you can add on to it by extruding and then new sketch and then extruding and new sketch and then extruding a new sketch until you, at the end your puzzle is, piece is complete. Now personally I find this generic gray quite revolting. It is boring. We're going to change some color properties. I'm going to change this to a nice Ooh, I don't know. Ooh, I thought I saw dark green. There, now it looks a lot more interesting. This piece is now done. So we save it. Under iPro, save as. Save this to your flash drive. In my case, I don't have my flash drive with me. Puzzle Cube Design 1 Part 1. Hit Save and you're ready to go. At this point, I can go ahead and then start a new sketch, a new part, standard IPT, and then off I go. You're going to be doing this for all five of the puzzle pieces on the cube that you ultimately are approved to build. So my advice to you is to go ahead and actually build, go watch, follow the tutorial, pause it as you need to, make this piece as a sample starter piece. If it happens to be one of the pieces in your design, fantastic. But at least get comfortable making sketches, finishing sketches, extruding them, extruding them, and then adding new sketches on top, and then extruding again. This is called additive modeling. We will build by adding more and more onto it. We don't have to worry about negative extrusions or, or cuts that will come later. This piece, these puzzle cube pieces are easy to make an inventory because we start off with a sketch and then just keep adding on. Alright, I hope this helps a little bit and I hope you get a chance to read this in case I'm out on Thursday.